Welcome back, everybody. In this video today, we're going to go over some quick tips inside plasticity. I am currently using, uh, I like to say, 2024.1 and change. Um, but like I said, we're going to go over some quick tips here to help speed up your workflow. Things that I've uh, run into that are quite helpful and I may not have actually is, uh, talked about in my uh, Plasticity 101, which you can also head over there and get all the commands and everything on how to use them. So definitely go check that playlist out. So let's go back to Plasticity here and we'll start going over some things. So I'm going to show you a couple quick selection methods here. So let's uh, zoom in here to this little feature. And you can uh, pick up this uh, this little workstation over on my Gumroad or QBrush for free. So if you want to play with it and follow along, either way. So let's go ahead and zoom back in there. And if you want, um, things that you tend to run into that I ran into a lot when I first started, but then I finally found a, a quick shortcut. You know, sometimes you want all these, all these guys all around here, all around this loop. And there is actually a quicker way to do it. If you do Alt and Control and you click it, selects everything along that loop. Uh, most of the time it's pretty accurate. Sometimes you'll have to deselect things, but if we wanted to just do a quick uh, fillet on it, we can just go ahead and do that. There you go. Uh, and see now I can actually hold down Alt and select that outer perimeter if I wanted. Um, if you do Control 2, you can select a perimeter as well of a face. And if you wanted to select like all faces, you just select then in Control 3. And that will uh, pull up your selection of all the faces on that one solid object doesn't necessarily mean need to be solid but um it could be a a sheet with multiple cuts and stuff like that it'll select all the faces so moving on there i'm going to show you a quick so say like we want to add some detail to this little generator or whatever it is i'm going to isolate him real fast so we can see him so I want to put some edge details around this thing here. So I'm going to pick like face close to it that's flat, hit space. Now I got a temporary construction plane. I'm going to do a shift A. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and do radial array. We'll just keep it at the default there. I'm going to go ahead and select that. Do Alt D real quick. And then I also want to do Alt D. Oops. We have. Oh, there we go. We're back. <laughs> so Alt D that one. Okay. So now I have this region here. Did you know you can actually copy regions? So what happens when you do that? So if I do a Shift D, you can see it created an outline of that region. Kind of cool. So I want to create like a little rounded detail in here. But I don't want to do a whole bunch of fill it in and stuff like that. So if I do O for offset, and I'm going to overextend it just a little bit, then if I offset again and actually pull it back out, it automatically fillets it for me. And that's these gap fill controls down here. I can do a linear, a natural, which just kind of eliminates the extra one, extra uh, CVEs, and then round. There we go. So now I can select all these other delete a quick radial array. Got it. We're gonna do shift I. Select him. Good. I can get rid of this X. Get rid of the temporary construction plane. So I am just gonna. There we go. Now I should just be able to drag it in and boom. Got my extra little added detail in there now. Cool. So um, you know that you have dimensions inside. You can, do, you can bring up the dimensions in here. 
And if you do a control plus, and depending on the orientation or the construction plane or orientation, you could do it like that. But did you know, if you wanted, you could do a temporary construction plane of an angle you like to keep. And if you do control plus, Now you can see I created one kind of off axis. So the construction planes come into effect with the dimension command. So let's see, say like uh, we wanted to add some detail. I'm going to show you how to kind of replicate uh, curves and st or uh, angles and stuff like that. So I'm going to create a little detail in here that I can cut in. So if you do shift A and you can select wherever you want. If you hover over an edge that you like the angle of and you hit just tap shift, notice how it gives you a parallel line or guide that you can use. So let's tap that one. Okay, now I'm going to do a quick bevel on it. Just uh, there we go. I'm going to do a shift I, select that. Okay. Now, if I wanted, I could just suck him in a little bit or bring him out. We'll bring him out. And then add a We'll fill it to it. Boom. Now just get rid of the delete the redundant topology and there you go. So that comes in really handy. Um, it's a good practice like with sci-fi design to just kind of uh, replicate uh, angles on other parts of your uh, object. So pretty handy. So let's see what else can we talk about here. Um, I'm going to come out of uh, isolate. There we go. So say like a uh, cool thing with the mirror command that you probably didn't, you weren't aware of, but it comes in super handy. So I'm going to just draw this guy out here, but I want a, a duplicate one over on the right side here. So if I just do alt X and then just tap X again, okay, it works fine. But what happens if I do this side alt x x see it doesn't matter as long as there's nothing on the other side and you're not trying to merge the objects it will mirror it to that side so say like so let's bring him up just a little bit and then alt x and we do it on the y you can see it does it, it'll just automatically put a duplicate on the other side. Let me escape that and do Alt X and then Z. And as you can see, it automatically does it. So it doesn't really matter if there's anything there or not. It's just a, a few less keystrokes that you have to worry about. So just remember that when you're doing your uh, mirroring. So on the note of mirroring, if you wanted, you can, um, you can mirror things off axis, which some of you know. So I'm going to click this. And notice how the construct where the construction plane is at. Okay, it now zeroed it out at the center of this face. So I can take this object and I can do Alt X X. Boom. I got I got my feature. I duplicated my feature there. So let's take it one step further. What if we want to mirror these details here? And I've got um, a hotkey for adjacent faces to my minus key so I don't have to do a weird combination. So now if I wanted, I could do Shift D. Okay, we duplicated them. I want to do Alt X, X. Okay. Now I'm going to take this guy here and then try. Yeah.
Okay, I, I grabbed all of them, and now if I do Q, get rid of that, X, and get rid of the rest of these sheets. X. There you go. So definitely take uh, make use of temporary construction planes when it comes to mirroring. So let's go ahead and go down to show you how I made these vents real quickly. Pretty easy process. So we're going to do Shift D, duplicate him, because he's already cut out. I already got a little cut in there for him. So I'm going to go ahead and isolate. I mean, this is just like super easy. So go ahead and do select on the face, Control R, for the isoparam. Okay, now I'm going to do Alt J. I'm going to separate all of them, and then I'm going to do a thickened sheet. So I got a hotkey to Shift T. Extrude it out. I'm going to yeah. There we go. Now go ahead and go to your uh, edge selection. We're going to select all of these except that one. Then deselect all these back here. And then Q, Q, boom. Merge it all back together. Come back out. Now you got a quick little grill vent thingy. So quick and easy. Okay, one last one here. Uh, this has to do with the pipe command. A lot of people probably know this. I'm going to select everything again here. But you can um, use custom profiles to make quick and easy details. So let's take a look at this profile right here. This cut here. This is just one cut using this little profile right here. So let me show you how to do it. And isolate him. Oop. Isolate. All right. There we go. So I'm going to draw out a new line real quick. Just like that. Shift A. Nothing too crazy. All right. I'm going to bevel it just a little bit. And do a shift I. Boom. Done. Okay. Now I got my angle I want to use. So I'm going to hold down Alt, select that. And then go ahead, hit P for pipe. It automatically does a cut in it. Now, if I come right here, it's kind of a pain to go find these things. Select custom profile, and if I select the center of this region, you can see how it highlights. Don't select the outer perimeter, select the inner. Select it. Now let's come back out and take a quick look. And there we go. You can see it puts that profile right down the center of your pipe. So, and it's dependent on the size of the profile. So, uh, you can't scale this after this. If you wanted it bigger, you would have to scale the profile itself. So let's go ahead, right click to, to confirm it. And then all you gotta do is just come in and do a little cleanup here. Just extrude that out. Be nice if uh, you can uh, tell it to go slightly beyond the, the edge, but that's all right. We can't have everything, so. But that was that was it for this uh, batch of batch of quick tips. There, I hope you found something useful in there, and maybe it'll uh, speed you up a little bit. Hopefully, so. And then we'll definitely see you in the next video. You guys have a good day.